Hey everyone, it's Ozzy from OzTox Hardware, and today is an informative recap and explanation video all tied into one. We're discussing AMD's brand new CPU architecture, Ryzen. Just as a very quick disclaimer, I won't be discussing anything we haven't already heard about Ryzen. Rather, I'll be analyzing confirmed news articles and give my thoughts on the subject matter. I'm sure most of you have at least heard about Ryzen, previously known as Zen. It's basically AMD's brand new successor to the mediocre bulldozer lineup, set to release pretty soon, like before March pretty soon. AMD has quoted time and time again that this new architecture boasts at least a 40% IPC gain over Excavator. I won't get into the math because I already have two videos theorizing where this will land the new architecture. And if you wanna see the math yourself, then you can go ahead and check those videos out. But this basically puts Ryzen somewhere around Haswell in single threaded applications. In terms of confirmed specifications, we know that the flagship eight core 16 thread processor is on the 14 nanometer node, has a 95 watt TDP, holds 20 megabytes of total cache and runs on the new unified AM4 socket. Its confirmed clock speed is at least 3.4 gigahertz base, but at CES, an engineering Ryzen sample was actually running at 3.6 gigahertz based and 3.9 boost. Based on the demo shown at AMD's New Horizon event about a month ago, the eight core Ryzen variant competes with the $1,000 eight core 6900K at a fraction of the power and presumably price. Of course, take this with a pinch of salt as you always should with any first party hosted event. So far, we only really know the specs and rough performance estimates of the eight core flagship from AMD, but Lisa Su confirmed that there will be a full lineup of Ryzen CPUs at launch. Concerning all Ryzen CPUs will have simultaneous multi-threading, AMD's version of hyper-threading. This means that four core eight thread and possibly six core 12 thread variants will be available in a month or two when Ryzen launches. Over 30 new AM4 motherboards were showcased at CES as well. There are five different chipsets, two small form factor, one essential or pretty much business slash basic, one mainstream and one enthusiast. The X300, the small form factor board, uh, the mainstream and enthusiast board support overclocking, but only the enthusiast board supports multi-GPU cross-firing and SLI. Ryzen will also be available in pre-built machines. So far, Ryzen looks very, very appealing and I'm more than excited to see the final revisions. Now, I'm not here to police your feelings, but I think any and all tech enthusiasts, specifically PC enthusiasts, should be ecstatic for its release. Why? Simply because it targets all the drawbacks of previous AMD generation CPUs, as well as their competition. Haswell, Skylake, and Kaby Lake. Haswell, Skylake, and Kaby Lake are most definitely high-end products. That's an undeniable fact. But if we're going to be objective, it has some undesirable features that AMD is now capitalizing on. The very first one is bringing overclocking to the masses. Since Nehalem, most Intel CPUs are locked unless you have a K variant processor now extending into the i3 CPUs as well, you're unable to overclock. There are exceptions to this with base clock overclocking on Skylake using older BIOS revisions and base clock overclocking on Nehalem, Sandy Bridge, and Ivy Bridge, but those aren't officially supported. Normally, this isn't really a big deal. AMD has locked their products before. Just look at the Black Edition processors in the Phenom 2 series. But now that they have a potentially competitive processor lineup that's completely unlocked, it's definitely a game changer. To add to that, both mainstream and enthusiast chipsets from AMD will allow overclocking. Minus a select few of mainstream boards from Intel, you cannot overclock your K variant CPU unless you are using an enthusiast Z variant motherboard. AMD fortunately promises the opposite. Basically, the mainstream B350 chipset, which potentially includes cheaper $60 motherboards, will have overclocking capabilities. While I imagine the yields won't be as great using it over the X370 chipset, it's definitely a step in the right direction. And while on the subject of motherboards, I'd like to segue to the second point, socket unification. 
AMD promises a unified AM4 socket for all of their desktop CPUs from this generation. All of their processors ranging from lower end Bristol Ridge APUs to their eight core flagship can all be used on the exact same motherboard in theory. This is a huge upgrade from the ugly three socket disarray they use with the bulldozer architecture. It also gives a very large upgrade path, especially compared to the competition. Right now, the highest end processor on the LGA 1151 socket is the four core eight threaded i7 7700K. If you want extra cores, you must switch to the more expensive LGA 2011 socket that holds six through 10 core Intel CPUs. AMD changed the format by creating a more seamless upgrade path. If the consumer wants to upgrade to the flagship CPU from an APU, they can do so without purchasing a brand new motherboard and switching platforms. Now server CPUs are a bit trickier. I'm not completely sure whether or not 16 cores and above variants will be available on the AM4 platform, but my first guess is that there will be server variants of the socket for those specific scenarios. Next is TDP. Now TDP does not directly correlate to power draw, but for CPUs, it's usually a decent ballpark estimate for actual power consumption. With that being said, the flagship eight core CPU has a 95 watt TDP, a 48% improvement over its alleged competitor, the 140 watt 6900K, and a 32% improvement over its older brother, the 125 watt FX 8350. Ryzen's presumed efficiency is almost unheard of in the processor market at this point and opens the door for better overclocking potential, better temperatures, and better performance per watt. These benefits trickle down to less powerful SKUs as well. It means that the four core and possibly six core variant will also be very efficient. In the mobile market, Ryzen processors and APUs can work effectively in laptops and tablet PCs while staying cool, quiet, and maintaining a great battery life. Lastly, and probably the most controversial part of this video is the price of Ryzen. Nothing has been confirmed, but there are leaks that are rumored to indicate it's MSRP. Just some very quick advice for all of you. Unless it's confirmed from AMD themselves, don't believe it. That simply creates a falsified and delicate cloud of hype that just really isn't needed at this point. I do have my own theories for Ryzen's price, but I won't disclose them because I did promise that this would be an analyzation of confirmed articles, not my own speculation. But I do believe it will be priced pretty aggressively. It's very obvious that the CPUs will undercut Intel, but the question is, by how much? So I'll leave that up to you guys to speculate. I think that the launch price will be aggressive enough for Intel to consider dropping their prices on the top end and enthusiast lineup in order to compensate for the new competition. But like always, we will see in a few months. Overall, Ryzen looks very promising for budget builders and enthusiasts. It will hopefully respark the flame of competition we've all so dearly wanted back for a few years now. I'll try to get my hands on a four core eight thread variant to test as I'm sure your sub boxes will be overflowing with flagship reviews when the NDA drops. So that's it for this video guys. If you enjoyed it, definitely leave a like and if you loved it, definitely subscribe. I have more videos like this coming out soon so I hope you guys can stop by again and watch them if you can. Until then, peace out. Insane, insane, keep me insane. Insane, keep me insane. Insane.